just wanted to show off the t-shirts that we came up with. If you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, you'll notice the other week we had talked about we were going to be doing something special for this year's open house at Steyr. So this is what we came up with. Uh, I did post a few pictures of my lovely wife. Uh, she was nice enough to model out of one of the shirts for us. But I uh, just wanted to give you a closer up in case if you didn't get to see it on the those channels, you get to see it here today. Well, this here is the shirt that we designed. So if you happen to see one of them walking around uh, at Open House or at your local range around West Tennessee, more than likely, you're going to meet me. So... If you see it, say hi. If you might be interested in one, a little shameless plug, we do happen to have a couple extra. Uh, just send me an email or a private message on one of the two platforms, and I'll get back with you, and we can make some arrangements. All right, well, this video is going to in detail on the L40 to an L357A1 conversion. Um, the particular one that we're going to do today is the L, like I said, but this will work for any of the 40 caliber models in all four sizes and generation uh, from generation 2, 3, and 4. All you're going to need to do is when you order your parts is to specify what model you have in a S, C, M, or L and the A1 or non-A1 platform. Uh, L40 that we're going to do the conversion on today. There will be a few tools that you're going to need to do this. It just makes life a little bit easier. And I'll show you what those are here in just a second. First, we're going to go through and we're going to make sure we have no mag. And it is an empty firearm. So make sure you double check this before you get into tearing yours down. You wouldn't want to have, have an accidental discharge. Alrighty, a couple things you're going to need to do this full build out or just to make your life easier if you decide to do the solid guide rod uh, for your styre. This here is just an inexpensive little flat blade uh, screwdriver, something in the size for a pair of glasses. This particular one is a Pittsburgh 2.4 by 25. Like I said, it's just a, a very small flat blade. You're going to need yourself a cup of water and you're going to need a lighter. Um, you can use a regular Bic lighter or like this one here is for my cigar. It's a butane torch lighter. Uh, will make life easier than trying to use a oven. Don't do that. Alrighty. Well, what we're going to do to start off, we're going to do a disassembly of this chassis. Uh, if you're not familiar, you're going to head double check, make sure everything's good and cleared. You're going to drop your slot. You will have to depress your trigger. If not, it will not. Uh, the slide will not uh, remove from the chassis. Your key mod uh, hole for your safety. You will have to depress it and throw the forward lever. Once you've done, the slide will remove. Very quick disassemble to start with. Pull out your guide rod. Your barrel will go forward and pull out backwards. There you go. This here will also work. This is a basic field strip for cleaning. To start off this conversion, this here is the extended length barrel from Ranger Point Precision. As you can tell, it is marked with their logo on the top of the barrel on the breech. And it also is designated Caliber Pacific. This barrel here is spiral cut fluted and threaded in a 1x28 pitch. So your standard U.S. Uh, suppressor, uh, flash hider, or screw thread, uh, thread protector will work on this one. We're also going to use their compensator, which is also marked with their logo. The nice thing with this barrel, um, it does the, the compensator is sold separate, the barrel is also separate, or you can get this in a package deal, and I do believe everything that we're going to have here they do have a uh, package deal if you buy it all at one time do remember that this is model Pacific so make sure you order the correct lengths if you have an M, an L, or a C or an S model when you order one of these barrels from, St from Ranger Point it will come 
with an extra spring. This spring also comes with a little instruction manual on what it is designed for. They did find, due to the case pressure differences from the 40 Smith & Wesson to the, to the uh, 357 SIG round, you needed a little bit more for your injector uh, to, to pull the cartridges out. It does come with a little explanation what they're to do. Uh, also comes with their support page which will probably end up showing some video or it will give a uh, detailed on how to remove and do your ejector if you don't happen to see this video but you're watching it so you're gonna get to see me do it and I'll show you how to do it. When you go to install this spring it is not designed as a full replacement. This is going to end up being in addition to your factory spring as a helper. So, going back to the flat blade screwdriver that we're going to have, on the top of your slide you will notice where your extractor is at. Behind it is just this little black button. You're going to take your screwdriver and you're going to have to insert it in and push backwards. Uh, this will take off the pressure off the extractor. You will then just slightly pry up and the extractor will come forward. Make sure you have your thumb here inside the top of the slide to catch it. It will come forward and this is what it looks like. Just to help you remember, this little button will go back into the top of the slide. So it goes in this way with the claw facing in here, uh, facing into the internal of the slide. So I'll show you this way. That is how it is supposed to go back. With the screwdriver, you're going to need to pull the spring forward and out. and there is your spring. That little button on the front is a piece of uh, plastic that is mated into that spring. Your secondary spring will just slide inside of it like so. To reinstall this without losing any parts slowly slide it back down into the hole and push it until it bottoms out With your extractor, like I said, the claw is going to face forward, the round button part will face backwards. You will need to push back and down at the same time. It may be necessary, as you see I'm struggling here just a little bit to keep this all in camera and trying to keep it in focused. You may have to take the screwdriver and push the spring back while pushing down. Once it is seated, it does have the screwdriver pin, you'll have to pull it out and it'll be seated. I did have to switch out to a, uh, a 3.025 just a little bit bigger of a screwdriver. Um, this is a little bit of a pain to do just due to that extra spring inside. There is some pressure in here so this may take you a moment or two like it took me. But that is how you'll install your new extractor spring. And you'll be done with the screwdrivers. All right, the barrel install is extremely simple. It goes just in, just like your factory. Tip the front end. Do be careful if you have a threaded barrel. You do not want to booger up your threads, so don't just cram it in a hole. Uh, I would recommend to buy the thread protector for a threaded barrel, because if you damage these threads, it is a pain in the butt to have them reshaped and fixed, 
and you wouldn't want them coming loose on your suppressor. Once that is done, you'll need to set this off to the side for a moment. Move the other barrel out the way. Now we're going to get into your factory recoil spring. This is where your cup of water, your lighter, and a rag come in extremely handy. This spring does have some sharp edges due to the pressure and you're going to pull on it. The rag's just going to help protect your hand. What we're going to do on the front of this spring, as you can see, they're molded one time use in a machine. Um, there is no saving this a factory original guide rod. So once you do this, this rod, it, this piece of polymer plastic is garbage. Um, you can save it, put it back in your box, or throw it in the garbage can. With the rag, you're going to have to grip it and pull back on the spring. I have to get mine here assembled just a little bit better in my hand. With the lighter and the other, you're going to need to melt this tip. Do be careful not to burn yourself. The cup of water is going to be set up to cool the polymer. There we go. It does take a little bit of heat to get this polymer to, to move and flex. Once it's done, release the spring over the front. The polymer is going to be warm, so don't let it get you. Your spring will come off. The water is there just to cool it off and kind of catch it. And now your spring's free. I'm not going to edit this video so you can actually see how uh, difficult and you know a little bit of manipulation it takes to pull that spring off. Just so you have a very good idea. This here is going to be your new guide rod. It comes with an Allen key, the set screw. Um, this here is the packaging, exactly how you'll receive it. I've done this spring on every Steyr pistol that I've owned. Um, all of the new A models. And I, this is one of the very first upgrades I normally do. Every time I've, I've gotten one of these guide rods, it always comes with a brand new Allen key, which is awesome. So if you are ever to forget where you put it and buy another gun or you need one, Ranger Point has them and they'll tell you exactly what size it is. I don't have to have a numbered Allen key to tell you this. On your spring, it doesn't matter either end, they're both the same. Insert on one end, you'll need to collapse it and reinsert your locking screw. Do make sure when you do this that you do not cross thread the little nut. Once you start it, it's there. You can take a key and tighten it up. All right, once you have it all tightened up, pull out your Allen key, and there's your new solid guy rod. It'll install just like your factory one with the Allen head facing out of, out of your slide and lock it in to the barrel. And that is it. Your compensator will take a little bit to figure out in what direction it just screws on. Standard lefty loosey righty tighty. 
once you have it set, it has an Allen. I have to find mine. I had set it off to the side. You'll want to make sure that it is bottomed out and set your Allen to the compensator for the barrel. Uh, you don't really have to put a lot of torque on this. Just enough to hold it. You don't want to strip it out. It is aluminum. As you saw, I just tightened it up and it's on the barrel in the vertical position. And that's what that will look like. The next step in this one is going to be the recoil management weight. Uh, this weight goes in the front of your chassis. I've done a review and talked about this before. But this here, it seems like some people like it and some don't. I will have to tell you, personally, in f three, four pistols now that I have, I'm trying to think of each model, um, this is just something standard I like to put into them. It gives it very nice counterbalance. It is a milled piece of brass, has their logo in the top of it. And again, just like everything else, comes with an Allen key. This particular one, like I said in previous videos, we'll just go over this. So, sorry if you've seen it before, you have to bear with us. When you install this into the nose of the chassis, it does not matter which way the logo goes. It can face left or right. Um, for myself and doing it, I just like mine to face off to the right. When you install this, there are two little set screws that lock this to the chassis. Do not over tighten these. I've told people before, messaged with a few people, and have asked, when you set this in there, you just barely torque them. Start off with your guide rod in your chassis at the front and push it to the rear until it goes all the way against the back of the lug. You will then have to click it into the chassis. It does make a positive contact sound. I run my hand on the inside just to make sure that I got it all the way seated. And then with the set screws, it does not matter, you can start in the front or the back. Lightly thread them without cross threading. I start mine and run them about halfway and stop and put in the second one. These do not need any Loctite or glue. It will bite into the polymer. And show this here. When you run these down, you do need to go back and double check. They need to be flush with the top of the brass. Once they are flush, that's all you need to do is to stop. It will lock in the chassis. Get this one pushed down. You can use the end of the Allen key or take your fingernail and run it right across the front lip, lip edge and you should not catch the screw. I've done enough field testing with this. Some people are concerned that the spring will touch on here. It does not. There's still um, a little bit of room, probably the thickness of this Allen. Uh, can't really give you a great estimate. I would say the diameter of a pencil rod. This will not come out. I've beat these. I've tried to shake them out. Um, I've shot 2,000 rounds out of my 9mm L model with this weight in here, and it's never loosened up. So for those that are concerned about it, I'm sure in some weird, you know, world or just abuse, something was to happen. It, it, there is a possibility, but I have not come across it, and I've torture tested one L9 already. So that is the, the end of that install. We've put everything together. Now it's just time for reassembly. 
do to make, make sure that your takedown lever is in the down position. We'll take your upper and match it. Need to cycle the slide action all the way. Set the lever if it doesn't kick all the way up. And there we go. Now you have an L357 SIG with a compensator. For those that have been seeing it hide over here, this is the extended magazine. And that is what it will look like fully assembled. Now we are going to go to the range and do some test shooting later today. We're going to end up shooting some Sig Sawyer 115 grain, or sorry, 125 grain full metal jackets. And then we're going to upgrade to the Sella and Bellet, the S and B 357 Sig. This will be 140 grain, again, full metal jacket. These are the only two types of ammo that I shoot in my 357 Sigs. Uh, that's commercial. I do shoot some hand loads occasionally, but for the testing, for what you'll see in this video, these are going to be the two ammunitions that we're going to use. Uh, 100 rounds uh, of each is what we're going to test this with. Alrighty. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, due to everything that's going on on the YouTube community, I'm sure everybody's been told, you know, click subscribe, hit the notification button to get the updated newest content and info. I really hate to have to ask you guys to do that, but if you haven't, please hit those buttons so you can get the rest of the content as we upload and do other things. Steyr Open House will be this August, the 23rd through the 25th at their U.S. headquarters in Bessemer, Alabama. You can find all that information on the Facebook page or on the Instagram. I have it posted. I'll put links in this video. And don't forget, all of these parts, everything that I'm showing you for the pistols, can be found at rangerpointprecision.com. And the links will be put into the thread of the video. Hope you all enjoy it. See you on the range.